What's so special about Martinsville? Go back to 1947. Clay Earls buys farmland in a swale off Route 220 and builds a half mile dirt oval. 9,000 fans in their Sunday best get all covered in red clay dust when Red Byron wins its first race. And Martinsville Speedway is born a year before NASCAR. The track gets paved, capacity grows, and Earls befriends competitors, sending broke drivers home with spending money to get back on their feet. In 64, one of them, Fred Lorenzen, receives the first of the track's signature trophies, a Ridgeway grandfather clock lovingly crafted in a factory just down the road. Race mornings, you'll find Earls right in front of the main gate, greeting fans, taking suggestions, and making sure they know they're valued and appreciated. He says, you'll sell the fan a memory as much as you'll sell them a ticket, and if the memories are good, they'll come back. Martinsville's tight corners become a great place to settle scores. Feuding Buddy Baker and Cale Yarborough start side by side on the front row, but they don't make it past turn one. 1981, Earl's favorite finish. Modified aces Richie Evans and Jeff Bodine fight side by side to the last lap. Bodine slams Evans into the turn four wall, and Richie crosses the line with two wheels atop the wall and two on the racetrack to win. Earls has passed on, but the place is in great hands. His grandson and namesake, Clay Campbell, runs it with a focus on customer service, just like his granddad. It's a happy 70th birthday to the sole remaining speedway from NASCAR's beginning, and my personal favorite, a little short track that thinks it's a super speedway, Clay Earls Martinsville.